Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to A Lovely John, where we talk about literature. Today, we are continuing our discussion from a previous episode that asked the question, where does meaning come from? In the first part, I introduced the discussion of literary theory, and I introduced this great divide about how we answer that question. That is, that there are two major sources for where people theorize that meaning in a work comes from. Either comes from intrinsically in the book, we're looking for the meaning in the book, or it comes from the reader, that the reader causes the book to be meaningful. We also went through three schools of thought in the previous episode, moralism, formal criticism, and psychoanalytical criticism. If you haven't watched that video yet, check it out first as it goes into more detail about how I'm framing this question and obviously to get the content on those schools of thought. For today, we are beginning with reader response. In this mode of criticism, we're basically emphasizing the reader's response to the literature. As a reader, you sit down and you think about how does this book make me feel as I'm moving through this story and as I'm encountering these characters or ideas. And this analysis really focuses focuses on the interplay between the work and the reader. It emphasizes that the effect of the book is essential to what the book means. And this school of thought is really the beginnings of the idea that meaning can exist in the book itself. And this was the first school to really bring up the idea that readers actively make the work meaningful, that meaning that otherwise would not be there. Next, let's talk about structuralism. So this school of literary criticism focuses on basically some assumptions that come from the field of linguistics. It attempts to analyze works from the smallest unit, um, from the foundational assumption that the most essentially common human thing is language. So it's working from the smallest unit being the word up to these more complex structures, and it's looking at the way that these structures are formed and how those create meaning. And the structuralist attempts to construct an interpretation interpretation of general sociological, psychological, or cultural principles on the structural implementation of language to articulate those ideas. In this way, the smallest elements rise to give insight to overall structure of narrative, characters, character development, etc., which in turn give insight into the structure and reality of human nature. And this school of thought sits firmly in the first category, insisting that Meaning is found within the work, and meaning is found within the work down to the smallest form. The next school of thought that I want to talk about is post-structuralism, also known as postmodernism. As you might have guessed from the title, it is a response and a rejection of the previous one, structuralism. It rejects the idea that meaning can be derived from the structure of the work or even from language itself. Instead, this school of thought asserts that there is no such thing as objective meaning to be found in the book at all. Wrapped up in the idea of postmodernism is the concept that structures are both artificial and artificially imposed, especially by the power structures that are already in place in society, and so therefore the book is a product of power. Deconstructing these structures then is more of a sociological movement than it is literary interpretation. So this school of thought sits firmly in the second category. Um, that meaning comes from the reader and the very way in which we seek meaning and the structures for meaning making also come from the reader and basically all of it is artificial and meaningless. So that is a very quick rundown of all of the major literary theories and I hope it was helpful for you. If you have questions about it on a more specific level, then feel free to leave those in the comment section down below and I will do my best to answer them. If I don't know the answer for it, I will either let you know or research it to find out. So now that we've kind of covered all of these different schools of thought and how they address this question of where meaning comes from, I want to tell you what my perspective is and how I approach texts as I read them and as I interpret them here on the channel and just in general. Like reader response criticism, I recognize that all forms of art are meaningful because of the interplay between the creator and the audience, between the artist and the viewer, between the author and the reader. However, I do believe that the ultimate source for meaning is in the work itself, that it exists in the work, whether you choose to pick up that book and read it, that that book is meaningful. Music doesn't cease to exist, or the composition doesn't cease to exist, simply because no one is there to pick up the violin and play it. Those ideas, structures, and the beauty is there, um, but it doesn't really matter until somebody picks up and plays the violin, right? And I agree, as a result, that readers are essential to the overarching purpose of art, which requires this interplay, because art is ultimately a conversation. 
So I think that insisting that there's no role for the reader is like a person getting up and giving a lecture to a dark and empty lecture hall. That would be insanity on the part of the reader to assume that nobody out there is going to read it, listen to it, or get anything out of it, or, eat, or to engage in something that is essentially meaningless. Likewise, I reject the postmodern notion that all meaning is artificial anyway. Um, that's like a person taking a magnifying mirror to a garbage heap or a piece of poop and looking for a pattern and insisting that it's meaningful. Um, and that would be insanity on the part of the reader to go about reading books and trying to understand them while at the same time insisting that everything is meaningless. So in other words, the reader assumes intelligence and purpose behind the book and the author assumes intelligence and purpose on the part of the reader. And the purpose of the author may not line up with the purpose of the reader, and that's okay. So, as a reader, I am here not merely to read for entertainment, but to truly listen. I'm not here merely for facts, but I'm reading for understanding. I'm reading for deeper understanding. And I hope that you are too, and we can go on this journey of literature together. So until next time, my name is Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile. Thank you.